welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is Taylor so in the past my like Ryerson fashion video and just like my fashion school videos have been really popular and I've been lucky enough to actually attend Central St. Martin's as well and I thought I should make a video about it and just kind of talk about my experience because I know when I was deciding if I wanted to go I honestly couldn't find a lot of stuff online about it. I'll just like t do a whole walkthrough of kind of like my experience. I'm pulling in my photos because I have really bad memory. <laughs> to begin, this is kind of like a throwback, um, kind of a, what is it? Not, it's not like a flash forward. This is kind of like a go back in time. I don't know. I cannot think of the word. This is a I have no clue. Basically, we're going back in time a little bit. This was in 2019. Obviously, I went to Ryerson, and in the third year of the program, you have the option of doing an exchange or staying at school um, and not going anywhere. And I kind of like I always knew I wanted to travel and like I think an exchange is an amazing thing to take advantage of so for so long I knew I just wanted to go to London um, but they didn't offer anything to London so it kind of was a little bit discouraging for me and I knew I didn't want to go anywhere else and like I just really wanted to go to London so that's kind of when I started to look at how can I get to London and what can I do there to like make it kind of worth it because yes I knew I wanted to travel but I didn't think I'd be comfortable traveling alone and I just thought that doing school there would be a great kind of like way for me to meet friends and then also like I'm working on my education I'm getting that extra bit that I wanted that exchange couldn't offer so that's kind of when I stumbled upon Central St. Martin's and I would say that I probably was researching about a year or two in advance. When I went into my first year at Ryerson, they were like, yes, you can do exchange in third year. And so for like those next two years, I was really thinking like, okay, what am I gonna do and how am I gonna get there? And like, what's the plan? How much is this gonna cost? Like, is this worth it in the long run? And so that's kind of where Central St. Martin's came to be. But I believe I had to apply by, it would have been 20, December 2018 and January 2019. Kind of like six-ish months in advance, seven months in advance to when I wanted to go. And so that's kind of when I was like, okay, shit, like this is real life. Totally remember if I had to do a portfolio, I will insert it on the screen if I did. And then that summer rolls around and I flew out on July 19th, 2019. And that was a Friday. So my school course started on that Monday so I decided to fly in on the Friday just so I had a little bit of time just to get everything kind of sorted before I had to go to school and then I stayed until August 12th so about three four weeks of being in the UK so now I'm gonna go over where I stayed and just kind of my accommodations when being there they have accommodations like they have student residences and that was something I was looking into um, but then I am a little bit of a procrastinator and I just kind of thought like oh it's fine like I'll get a place I'll get a place whatever and then really last minute I realized that everything was sold out and I could not live in student residences. When that became not an option, I was like, okay, now what am I gonna what am I gonna do? And honestly, it was a blessing in disguise because I was able to find an Airbnb and I will link it below if it's still online. Obviously, with COVID, I don't know if people have taken down their listings just for the time being. It was significantly cheaper. Um that I can remember. I was in Camden Town. It was about like a 10 minute walk to the school. Um, it was, I don't know, I have to put a map. I literally can't describe it. It's like downward towards the school. And there were so many different routes for me to get to school, which I loved. Like I kind of like got comfortable enough to like, the, my first few days I would be like with my maps, like how the heck do I get here? But then after a while it just became really natural to me and like I started figuring out my favorite routes of like the best things that I could see while walking to school. And I have never been one for public transit. I'm just like, I don't know, if I can avoid it at all costs and just walk everywhere, I would much rather prefer that. Like I love walking, feeling like I'm actually like 
living in the town and the city and like even in Toronto I'm the exact same like I will walk pretty much everywhere unless I'm like exhausted I became comfortable with the tube eventually but just for like that little bit I was really happy with how I could walk to school every morning and just like get that breath of fresh air it was literally one of the best experiences ever I stayed with um, I forget his name but he was like a working professional and his mother was there so she was you know a little bit older but like super super kind and like feel um, ever like uncomfortable and like I really really loved staying there it felt like I was like in an authentic house in London and just like got that like experience like I will insert my photos here but like the bathroom was beautiful walking up the door was amazing I got my own key I could lock my bedroom we shared the kitchen like in the morning like literally my Airbnb host would like make me coffee like I had great conversations with his mom about like all of her travels honestly I think it's the best Thing to do because you have like everything you need you have a bed you have sheets you have towels you have a kitchen you feel already a little bit more comfortable just because it has like that little loving feel to it because I definitely think that student residents sometimes just don't feel that way and so now I'm gonna go through the course so the course that I took was the fashion communications short courses in the summer and this one was specifically offered to older people and I don't think you necessarily had to have education I don't 100% know like, going into the overall, yeah, the courses, the way that the days worked out, it was like you would get to school, I think at 9 a.m. It definitely wasn't 8. I have no clue at this point. And you would stay there until I think 4 o'clock. So it was a full day. You had maybe a half an hour to an hour lunch. Kind of hard to remember. And then some days, like, they would say, okay, you have, like, a field trip. You have to go to this art gallery and we'll meet you there. Or, like, we're not going to meet you there, but, like, we want you to go so that you can see this art and like we got you the tickets there were group projects where we like actually had to go places that was like our own like we decided because we wanted to do this fun video as well the library at that school was the best and we actually spent quite a lot of time there different books they had the magazines were dated they had like every single vogue from literally the beginning of time to like present day they had so many design books like you would actually get like sucked into the library i wish i stayed had like spent more time there but like it honestly just felt like you could spend years in there um i remember one course we did too we did like headshots and like photo shoots it was such a diverse range of like different classes we did like computer design we did um an event so we literally planned a fashion show yeah, it was pretty sporadic, honestly. It kind of was overwhelming. It's definitely like a crash course into the fashion industry. Things I really liked about it was I think it's a great beginner course for fashion communication. I learned a lot, but at the same time, I think I had a lot of the knowledge already. So that kind of was sometimes a little frustrating for me. I loved all my classmates. There were about like maybe 25 of us and everyone was from like literally around the world i was the only canadian there were a few americans someone from germany spain uh i think thailand china i'm trying to think was there anywhere else i can't remember if there was anywhere else but honestly it was like amazing just to hear different perspectives and also making friends and the professors were amazing as well like so interesting and definitely it's a kind of a little bit of a culture shock um, obviously London is like the fashion headquarters <laughs> like they are number one um, I just like did a number three with this hand but they are number one so that was an adjustment just because I think in Canada and probably in the States like the profs are a little more contemporary and in London that was totally different and so now I do want to go over some things that I dislike I also just want to preface that I am someone who remembers negatives more than positives and because it's such a distant memory for me now and I like only really have photos to rely on that's kind of why like the negatives stick out the most so I don't want to like talk too much about them that like it seems like oh I don't want to go there I think it was one of the best things that I've done so just take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt so some of the negatives I do think that I wish I took a different course 
rather than fashion communication. It just kind of sometimes felt like, oh, I'm wasting my time, which leads me into another thing that I did not realize, but it really is something I think everyone should know, is that in London, things close early museums that you want to go to and just like those special things you want to go to they close at five o'clock i believe we got out of school at four or four thirty so that by the time you would leave central st martin's and get to where you wanted to go the place would already be closed that sucked for me because it would feel like days when i was in the school doing stuff that i've already learned and all i'm thinking about is like damn i could be somewhere else learning new stuff just like feeling like I'm in London and not like back at home in a computer lab like I always am and have been for the past like three years at that time you know that leads me into my next point which was that I wish I stayed in London longer at the end or earlier in the beginning the course is I believe a three-week like crash course and so I only stayed three days before and I believe three days after the course and the first three days that I went to London, I actually forgot my contacts in Canada. And I couldn't see that well. It was kind of uncomfortable for me to not be able to see well walking on the streets of London where like I don't know where I'm going. So those first three days were a lot of panic uh, because I'm trying to find a place where I can get my contacts. And obviously it's not legal because I don't have an optometrist in London and it was a whole thing and by the time that my parents sent them it was already halfway into my trip but my last three days I like jam-packed pretty much everything so I did the Harry Potter opera or not opera Broadway show I don't think it's called Broadway that's New York but it was a it, it came to Broadway so I did that Harry Potter show which was amazing but again that was like a six hour show like I did three hours and then you get get an hour break and then another three hours that was a whole day like gone for me the last day before I left I did a kind of like bus tour which that is not me I am not a big tour person I try to avoid them actually a lot because I'd rather just like enjoy being a local and just doing like more like local things so I did a specific tour I went to it was a whole day tour I went to Windsor Castle what is this place called oh I went to Bath and then the last thing we did was Stonehenge and I remember I left my house at like 7 in the morning and I was like scrambling to get to the place and then I got a coffee because I hadn't had a coffee in the morning and then as soon as I have my coffee and I'm getting on the bus they're like yeah you can't have your coffee on the bus and I was like oh so I literally just I couldn't even have a drink I just had to throw it out okay yeah so I think I just went on like a crazy tangent I just love London I love the UK I'm so grateful that I was able to do that summer course and it really was such a great way to get comfortable with a city with having people to fall back on you have friends you have people to go with like me and my friends we would go everywhere together go to restaurants go out drinking like I never really felt a hundred percent alone there which I loved I really really think stay longer than you think make sure your days are jam-packed get a phone plan right away walk everywhere get an oyster card for sure I think that's it the last thing I would say when you look back on this experience at any time in your life. I went two years ago and I still look back and I'm like, that was the best summer of my life. It was the best trip of my life. I don't even know how much anything costed. I feel like I was going crazy at the grocery store. I was eating out all the time, but honestly, like that doesn't even bother me anymore. Like it was the best summer ever. And that is the end of this video. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Please like this video and subscribe um, and comment. It really, really helps me um, just kind of grow my channel. And thank you for all my new followers as well. I really appreciate it. If you have any tips on London and like how I can move there, also leave that below because I would love to know. <laughs> and yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.